Jennifer Nuzzo, the New York Times has a standout article on these silly plastic barriers that have invaded our lives. That includes John Hopkins University research, which say desk screens could actually give us an increased risk versus intelligent use of masks. Can you help us with the plastic that's engulfed us? I am hermetically sealed from Lisa and John. I haven't hugged Lisa in like 18 months. That's not because of COVID. I mean, help me, Jennifer. <laughs> I think Lisa needs help right now, Tom. Can you ask the doctor a better question? I miss you guys so much. Oh, Jennifer, please, on the plastic screen, <laughs> help. <laughs> Somebody reach over and hug Tom. <laughs> he really needs it. Go ahead. No, I mean, you know, listen, I, we don't have a lot of evidence for a lot of these things. I think intuitively there are probably some environments in which it makes sense. If, for instance, toll booth operators, people who have a lot of exposure with the public, putting a, another barrier between uh, those people and the people they're serving, I think makes a lot of sense. But when you see people sitting at a desk and they have like a three foot, uh, you know, plexiglass uh, between them, it's, it's not clear what that does, if anything, and it sounds like it could potentially cause harm. The bottom line is um, probably not going to be as protective as a mask, um, although, you know, we always try to layer these interventions. But, um, you know, I think the most egregious example of the plastic was at one of the the, uh, the vice presidential debate, those tiny little things that um, separated um, mm -hmm. the vice presidential candidates. Not going to do much. Uh, help me with, then, the need to get vaccinated. What does the last 48 hours show you within all your reading and research about the getting vaccinated? That has not changed. If we do anything to put ourselves back to normal, to go to back to our lives, it is to get vaccinated. There is nothing new in the data that suggests otherwise. Heard a lot of news uh, yesterday about the potential need for a third dose. I will tell you, most people, including myself, think that the data aren't quite there to suggest that most people need it. There are clearly some small groups of people that absolutely uh, need extra help, and that's the immunocompromised, and they're already uh, able to access a third dose. But as far as people broadly, uh, you know, we're not yet convinced that that's happened. The bottom line is the vaccines are still doing exactly what they need them to do. They prevent us from getting still enough to get in the hospital, which again, if this well, virus couldn't do it, we'd never hear of it. Dr. Nutso, then when do we stop caring whether we get infected? Because right now I'll tell you, I'll be honest, as a vaccinated individual who has a child at home, and I, I sound like a broken record, who is not vaccinated, I care as much about getting infected as I do about getting very sick, just simply because this will affect the people who I care sure. about. So when does when does that change? Sure. So I think that's exactly a, a potential off ramp for, for caring about getting infected. Um, I have also unvaccinated kids at home because they're too young. And hopefully when vaccines become available for them, that'll, that'll lessen those worries. But getting a third dose doesn't necessarily prevent you from getting infected in the first place. So that's unfortunately not going to ease those worries for you. Dr. Nitsu, there have been reports about new antibody therapies coming out of China mm -hmm. that have actually been somewhat promising. How much does that potentially provide a game changer here where we can actually combat this and treat it more like a regular illness? I think that's, you know, one of the missing areas that uh, we need more progress on is, is, is treatments um, because, you know, there will be still some breakthrough infections, but also we know we have a lot of people who are not vaccinated and are going to need treatment. So that is, I think, uh, an important area of research. We have some things now, but they're not very scalable. You still have the... the um, the monoclonal antibodies you hear about, you have to go to uh, a center and basically be hooked up to an IV. And so it's very hard to deliver that um, in, at scale, particularly given the number of cases <clears throat> that we have. Mm -hmm. If we could give somebody a pill and treat them, um, potentially even at home like we do for influenza, uh, I think that would have an enormous uh, contribution to lessening our worries about this virus. Jennifer, New York City restaurants, and I'm sure other restaurants that our uh, listeners and viewers are uh, familiar with, uh, they're in an uproar about paper vaccines vaccine inspection to get into their restaurant. When do we get away from the silliness of what, the 1850s? When do we get away from a paper document that's clearly instantly forgeable? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's uh, a real problem. Um, people can forge it. Unfortunately, um, the apps are not potentially better than that. I think there was a story about one of the apps being used in New York where you could just upload any photo and, and get a green check, and then it's on uh, you know, the bouncer at a club to scrutinize whether you got your two Pfizer doses on time. Um, I think there are people who are pushing for a more verified uh, vaccine record. 
of course, that raises all sorts of concerns and potentially concerns among the people who have not yet gotten vaccinated. And we absolutely don't want to turn those folks off. But I, I think, um, you know, we're seeing right now the challenges of the immunization records that we have. They're um, easily forgeable. In my view, um, you know, people who are determined to not comply will find a way not to. People are very crafty. And so I tend to focus on changing hearts and minds and make sure we convince people to get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Doctor, thank you.